Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay in the comments so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments. Great morning, Teresa Lucas. Good morning, Kim Brewster McSwain. Good morning, good morning. So good to see you all. Happy Friday. You all know what to do. Go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast to your pages and your community groups. As I've been saying, it's a fine time to evangelize. This is the perfect time to evangelize your pages. Good morning, Lady Ruby. Great morning, Marion. Hello, Peggy White. Hello, my Annie. So good to see you. I am so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. Amen. Hello, Miss Arthur Mosley. So good to see you. Juanita, Cynthia, good morning. Good morning. Y'all go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. Go ahead and share the broadcast. Um, and then after you have shared, come back and type in hashtag shared and let me get this pulled up on my iPad. Great morning, Shavana. Hello, Sharon Parker. Good morning. Go ahead and type in shared and share the broadcast. I'll give you all a moment to get on. Make sure you've grabbed your pens. Make sure you've grabbed your journals. Make sure you've grabbed your Bibles. Make sure you've grabbed your one-year Bibles if you'll be listening with us uh, this uh, the, the, for the second part of the broadcast. Good morning, Jennifer. Go ahead and share. What time did you all go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? I went to bed uh, somewhere in a 10 o'clock hour. Woke up at 3.15. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful that God has allowed us to see another day. Somebody say, thank you. <laughs> he did it again. It is a great day to be alive. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Don't forget we have uh, the book study today at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're studying in the next chapter, going through the next chapter um, in the book on rejection by Joyce Meyer. And I'm excited about it. Yes. Hello, Audrey. Audrey Sinclair. So good to see you, Barita. Oh, it's a great day to be alive. God did it again. Y'all say God did it again. All right. Let me um, make sure I'm trying to share this. Someone share this in the uh, We Write the Word community for me, please. Uh, oh, you've been up since two, Lady Ruby. Wow. Well, all right then. Yes, good morning, everyone. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from. Go ahead and share where you're tuning in from. Go ahead and share where you're tuning in from. Go ahead and drop that in the comments. I like seeing where everyone is joining us from. <laughs> I like seeing where everyone's joining us from. Yes, good morning. Yes, God, I appreciate you. Amen. Amen. It's a great day to be alive. Amen. It really is. Yes, happy Friday. It's the weekend. Yes. <laughs> Look, I would like to say we made it. <laughs> as much as I love seeing you all every day, I would be honest and say it's always nice to be able to sleep in a little bit on Saturday. <laughs> it's nice to not have to set my alarm on Saturday. So I'm sometimes looking forward to Saturdays. Uh, I don't have to set my alarm and I just wake up when I wake up. And that's always a good feeling on uh, <laughs> on Saturdays. So yeah, Flint Nish say good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Carolyn Floyd. All right, why am I acting like I don't know what, what, are, what are we doing right now? <laughs> It's a great day to be alive. We have already said, God, I appreciate you. God, I thank you. Um, all right, my hands are blessed. All right, if you have not anointed your oily hands, yeah, oily hands every morning, right? If you have not anointed your hands, go ahead and grab your anointing oil and anoint your hands. And y'all go ahead and type in the comments, my hands are blessed. <laughs> My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. Everything I touch turns to gold. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus name. Amen. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. That's right. Everything I touch 
prospers. Everything I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. And I believe it. Everything I touch turns to gold. Everything I touch <laughs> turns to gold. Good morning, Yvette Hollins. How are you? You usually catch the replay, so good to see you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If um, you are on this broadcast live or if you are catching the replay, that means that you were on the wake-up list, and that is not a small thing. Um, somebody typed the number two. Somebody typed the number two. And if you are catching the replay, um, whenever you're catching the replay, we are on day two of our no complaining fast. Yes. So I um, want you all to tell me in the comments, how did you all do yesterday? How many times did you have to reset? I am excited to say that I have not complained that I was aware of not one time yesterday, which means I did not have to reset at all yesterday. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. So go ahead and type in the comments. How many times did you have to reset yesterday? And if you completely went through the day complaining because you forgot you were on a no complaining fast all as well, you can just reset. And what do we do? We repent, right? <laughs> You type in five things that you're thankful for and you move on. That's it. It's just that simple. 21 days and we are on day two. Day two. All right. <clears throat> day two. So how did you all do? You can go ahead and share that in the comments. And let's go ahead and take a moment to thank the Father. It's a great day to be alive. He has allowed us to see another day. God, I thank you. So Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are good in every way there is to be good, and we just want to say thank you. We are excited, and we are thankful, and we are honored to call you Father on today. We thank you for being our protector, God. We thank you for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you have protected us from. We just want to say thank you. Somebody type that in the comments. Thank you. We are not asking for anything. We are just saying thank you. Thank you. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind. Anybody else thankful for a sound mind? We thank you, God, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you, God, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you for being our healer. You are everything to us. And we say thank you. That's it. Just say thank you. Y'all type that in the comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a moment and make sure you've shared the broadcast. If you haven't shared, go ahead and share. Um, I need you all to write this down. I need you all to write this down. Stop confusing movement with progress. Stop confusing movement with progress. Does anyone know what I mean when I say that? Stop confusing movement with progress. Just because we are moving at times doesn't mean that we are making progress. Just because we are moving does not always mean that we are making progress. So we must not confuse movement with progress. And so I'm going to read our opening verse for today. And then I'm going to read our prophetic word coming from the Father's Heart Ministry. And our um, opening verse, if someone can type this in, is Psalm 37, 23. Psalm 37, 23. And this is coming from the Amplified uh, Translation today. Psalm 37, 23. If someone can type that in. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man <clears throat> are directed, excuse me are directed and established by the Lord when he delights his way and he busies himself with his every step. Let me read that again. It was in the, tra in the Amplified Translation. The steps of a good man are directed, or some translations say ordered, by the Lord and established by the Lord when he delights in his way and he busies himself with his every step. Psalm 37, 23, and that was in the Amplified Translation. Hold on, let me um turn off these notifications, the Amplified Translation. All right, so remember, write this down. Stop confusing movement with progress. Stop confusing movement with progress. And our prophetic word for today, or our devotional for today, everyone is constantly moving. 
everyone is and this is such a timely word everyone is constantly moving yet how many are actually progressing my kingdom what a question let me say that again everyone is constantly moving yet how many are actually progressing my kingdom to keep you moving all the time is a strategy of the enemy to keep you tired I need to say that again to keep you moving all the time is a strategy of the enemy to keep you tired and I say that all the time I say that all the time we must know we need to know when to stop and when to rest we need to know when to stop and when to rest because the enemy wants us wore out he wants us tired he wants us broke down he wants us feeling horrible he doesn't want us eating right he doesn't want us working out he doesn't want us drinking water he doesn't want us doing any of those things because he wants us tired all the time so I needed to say it again to keep you moving all the time is a strategy of the enemy to keep you tired if you are weary consider this are you just experiencing a lot of movement but no progress are we just experiencing a lot of movement but no progress are we experiencing a whole lot of movement but we're not making any progress listen I've been there when you see progress it is hard to get exhausted progress is exciting movement is exhausted progress is exciting movement is exhausting every step I have planned for you and notice he says that he has planned for us every step that I have planned for you has purpose in it this is key the Israelites thought they were making progress just because they were moving just because we are moving does not mean we are making progress this is a word on today this is a word on today sometimes to keep progressing you must cease movement so you can listen to my instructions sometimes we need to stop moving so we can listen for his instructions and let me tell you all although you know I I, I I understand you know what's going on and this is a very sad time you know and my heart goes out and I'm constantly in prayer for those you know who are sick who have lost loved ones but I can tell you this nothing happens that God has not allowed nothing happens that God has not allowed all right nothing happens that God hasn't allowed and I believe that he put us all on pause he put us all on pause because we're so busy moving 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 doing 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 and we were progressing and many were going nowhere we're all on pause somebody type in hashtag pause in the comments and so we need to take this time to get in that word and listen for his instructions that's right Tanuke amen be still and know that I am God so I am making the most out of this time although I feel like this is normal for me you know I think it's been Soraya 16 so I probably worked from home maybe 16 years um, you know we've already been homeschooling but almost 16 years because she was in kindergarten when we started you know I never really got out a whole lot I don't do a whole lot outside of being at home working and being with the kids and you know I kind of do some things but this is normal for me the whole you know feeling like the quarantine life I guess you can call it but um we need to I'm still making the most of this time you know because you know everything is shut down so things that we used to do being busy you know half the time doing nothing um, I were no longer able to do so we need to make the most of this time we're all on pause anyway and as he said sometimes we need to cease moving to listen to my instructions again let me start over the Israelites thought they were making progress just because they were moving sometimes to keep progressing you must cease movement so you can listen to my instructions with every step you take listen closely and glean every lesson and purpose just remember that if the scenery is looking the same and familiar you are not making progress you are just moving so ask yourself am I moving or am I making progress am I moving or am I making progress we need to stop confusing movement 
with progress. Write that down. We need to stop confusing movement with progress. Just because we're moving does not mean we're progressing. So ask the Lord, am I just moving or am I making progress? Because again, the question was, everyone is constantly moving, yet how many are actually progressing my kingdom? So that is a question for you. If you journal after waking early for his glory, ask the Lord, am I just moving or am I making progress? Am I just moving or am I actually progressing your kingdom? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? You know, where the enemy wants us busy, 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 busy doing for God that we're so busy that we have no time to spend with God to listen for instructions. So what does that mean? Who's ordering our steps? You know, who is it that's really ordering our steps? You know, if we're not taking time to pause, get quiet and listen and sit before the Lord and allowing him to, to, to direct our steps, then what does that mean? We are directing our steps. And let me tell you, I know where that got me. That turned my life into a whole big mess because I lived all of my life doing what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, how I wanted to do it, directing my own, ordering my own steps, making my own plans for my life. And I ran this car into a ditch, you know, and then I'm yelling, help, and asking God to come and clean up my mess. And I'm just so thankful and so grateful, you know, for his kindness and his mercy that he is doing just that. Still cleaning up the mess I made. <laughs> Still cleaning up the mess I made. And all I can say is, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. That's right. Martha was busy doing many things, but Mary was sick. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you have, we have to ask ourselves, are we Martha or are we Mary right now? Are we being Martha or are we being Mary right now? So again, we must stop confusing movement with progress. And so let me read uh, Psalm 37, 23 again. Let me get a sip of my hot uh, tea. Hold on. It's my uh, detox tea, but it's warm with a splash of lemon in it. <laughs> All right, Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are directed or ordered and established by the Lord when he delights in his way and he busies himself with his every step. So again, we must stop confusing movement with progress. I don't know about you, but that, that word that just blessed me and caused me to stop and ask some questions. All right. Um, so I didn't have a whole lot to share. Of course, when I read these prophetic words, that's kind of, um, you know, then I know which direction to go in, but I have a few things, um, uh, written down that I want to share with you that I wrote down. <coughs> Excuse me. Listen, is anybody else scared to cough? I had a little cough and I was sitting here trying to hold it for the last five minutes. <laughs> I was like, I need to let this cough out. I'm like, now is not the time to be coughing, right? Um, okay. Why did I just say that? <laughs> when we follow God's word and obey his voice, we step correctly <laughs> i know it's a new game i'm thinking why did i <laughs> why did why did when we follow god's word and obey his voice we step correctly when we follow god's word and obey his voice we step correctly write that down are y'all laughing at me when i when we follow god's word and obey his voice we step correctly when we follow God's word and obey his voice we step correctly and what does that mean what does that take what does that take for us to follow God's word and obey his voice what does that mean that means we have to trust him it all goes back to trust and so I can look back at my life and look at the mess that I made and look back and see where I ordered my own steps. I directed my own steps. I made my own plans. I did many. So I, I, I just, just was living my best life, right? <laughs> or so I thought. I'm looking back now realizing it really wasn't my best life. You know, I'm just living my best life. And realizing that it was because I didn't trust God. 
you know, I didn't trust God. And that goes back to me having daddy issues, you know, having been um, abused in many different ways by many different men. And I had trust issues. And because I didn't trust the earthly father, because I didn't trust the earthly stepfather, you know, because I didn't trust the, the uncle, because I didn't trust, because I didn't trust men, period. I had a hard time trusting God. And so because I made that inner vow, and remember, we talked about that not too long ago. I will never, I will never trust a man. I will never, you know, and all the I will nevers, and that included God. And so I just did what I wanted to do. So again, when we follow God's word and obey his voice, we step correctly. Anybody else want to step correctly? Because I know what looks, I know what happens when we are stepping incorrectly outside of the will of God. Um, so I want to leave you all with a few um scripture references so listen i was living my best life so i thought didn't ask anybody anything i just did what i wanted to do and i wonder why my life was a big hot mess i just love god yes i'll type that in lord i trust you i had a really hard time trusting god i didn't realize it you know at the time um so it, it took you know and again we can't trust somebody that we don't know we can't trust, we don't trust people that we don't know, right? We don't trust people that we don't know. Why did I have a hard time trusting God? Because I didn't really know him. I knew of God. I knew who people said that he were, that he was. I knew who, you know, the pastor said that he was as I'm sitting in the church and a few just listening to who the pastor said he was, but I didn't know him for myself. And because of that, I had a hard time trusting him. We do you, I don't just trust people I don't know. You know, you, you trust people as you get to know them. And that is the same thing with God. It took me getting to know him. And then that's when I realized, oh, wait a minute. He's not like my earthly fathers. He will not let me down. You know, he will not do all of these things. He is not like my earthly father. Praise the Lord. You know, amen. That's right. We got to step correctly when we follow God's word and obey his voice. We step correctly and that takes trust. So um, let me leave you with Psalm 119, 133. It says, order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Someone type that in the comments for me. Psalm 119, 133. Psalm 119, 133. Hold on. Psalm 119, 133. All right. And another one again. Well, Psalm 37, 23. And we already read that. That was our opening verse. <clears throat> so I want to leave you all that with that as well. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So those are two scripture, two scripture references I want to leave you with to meditate on. And step means one's going, the way one goes, one's direction step and y'all know i love looking up words so step means one's going the way one goes in one direction when we follow god's word and obey his voice we step correctly what does that mean we're going in the correct direction right and the word ordered means established and in hebrew the word it means to decree to make good to ordain and to succeed so the steps of a good man are ordered and directed and thus established by the Lord when he delights in his way and he busies himself with his every step. So if we were to take the word established and say and reread this, the steps of a good man are ordered and directed by the Lord. And it's, again, it says to decree, to make good, to ordain, to succeed, to succeed step the way one goes yes and so um i just kind of had some fun playing around looking up those words and really digging into what psalm 37 23 says so with that being said i want you to reread psalm 37 23 in the amplified translation remembering that step means one's going the way one goes one's direction and the word ordered means established and in hebrew it means to decree to make good to ordain to succeed and then really dig deep and see what that verse really means to you and what God is saying to you through Psalm 20, 37 23 in the Amplified Translation all right and so what else do I have here allowing God to order our steps takes trust it takes trust because I had to look back and I'm like why was I living the way that I was living why 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 did I do that just did what I, I, I don't I don't think I ever stopped and asked God anything and this was for a long time 
I don't think I've ever stopped and asked him. I just, I just did what I wanted to do. And I had to ask myself like, oh my God, why did I do that? And then I remembered it went back to the fact that I didn't trust him. And so allowing God to order our steps takes trust. Type in hashtag trust. All right. And so um, I wrote down seven ways on how to trust the Lord with all our heart. How do we trust the Lord with all of our heart? How do we trust the Lord with all of our heart? And so I have some scripture references and a few of them are coming from um the book of Proverbs. So how do we trust the Lord with all our heart? Number one, don't depend on you. I lived almost all of my life depended on me. Don't depend on you. And a scripture reference I have for that is Proverbs 3, 5. Proverbs 3, 5. So how do we trust the Lord with all our heart? Number one, don't depend on you. <laughs> don't depend on you. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understand and that's right Proverbs 3 5 and 6 do not depend on your own understanding and how do we trust God with all our heart number one don't depend on you say I do not depend on me number two cry out to God so in other words surrender to him and a scripture reference for that is Proverbs 3 6 Proverbs 3 6 it says seek his will in all you do and he will show you with which path to take. And I'm just so thankful and so grateful for that, that I don't have to depend on me. I don't have to lean on my own understanding. I can simply surrender and go to the Father and seek his will in all that I do. And he will show me with path, which path to take. Because <laughs> God knows there were plenty of times I thought I knew which path to take and it didn't end too well. It didn't end too well. How do we trust God with all our heart? Number one, don't depend on you. Don't depend on yourself. Cry out to God. Surrender to him. Number three, run from evil. Run from evil. Proverbs 3, 7 says, Do, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't trust in yourself. Don't depend on yourself. Don't be wise in your own eyes because we all know that does not end well. Or oh, I'm just telling you, it doesn't end well. Hashtag ask me how I know. How do we trust God with all our heart? Do not depend on you. Cry out to the Lord. Surrender to him. Run from evil. Number four, put God first in your life. Put him first. Put him first. Put him first. Put God first in all your life. And again, that takes trust that takes trust in itself and a scripture reference for that is proverbs 3 9 and 10 proverbs 3 9 and 10 and it says honor the lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce then he will fill your barns and grain and, and, and with grain and your vats with overflow with good wine and that spoke to me but i'm pretty sure um we can even use matthew 6 33 for that because that's not really the verse that i want to use for right now let's use uh, matthew 6 33 as well all right, Matthew 6, 33. So for number four, I put Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 and, Pro and Matthew 6, 33. All right, number five, check yourselves by God's word. Check yourselves by God's word. And for the rest of these, I'll leave, I'll leave, them, leave you all to look them up. Um, so how do we trust the Lord with all our heart? Number five, check yourself by God's word. Jeremiah 17, 9. Jeremiah 17, 9. Number six, listen to the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, listen, listen to the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26. And last but not least, rest in God's love. Rest in God's love. And Proverbs 3, 12. Proverbs 3, 12. And as you are reading through these scripture references, don't rush through them. Really just take time, slow down, meditate on them, and allow the Lord to speak to you through these um, scripture references. All right, so these daily steps that these daily steps that I gave you or these seven steps they're not easy but with the help of the Holy Spirit we can do them because let me tell you I know what life looks like when you order your own steps again when we follow God's word and obey his voice we step correctly and it is simply a surrendering to him and going before him and listen and allowing him to do what he does best 
you know, he's such a gentleman. He will not force himself on anyone. We need to just allow him to be God and allow him to do what he does best. But I'm just so thankful and so grateful that I made such a mess out of my life. And I yell, help! And he came to my rescue and still cleaning up the mess. Still cleaning up the mess. I'm just so thankful. Hello, Seven, my nephew Seven. Y'all y'all say hi to Seven. Nephew, you've been coming on consistently. Um, are you waking up at this time of the morning or are you going to bed soon? <laughs> or are you going to bed soon? The scripture reference for number seven was Proverbs 3, 12, 7. Are you waking up, waking early for his glory? Or are you going to be heading to bed soon? Or is it you just heading to bed? <laughs> All right, um, six and seven. Six was listen to the Holy Spirit. The scripture reference is John fourteen twenty six, And number seven is rest in God's love. The scripture reference is Proverbs 3, 12. Proverbs 3, 12. So that is all I had to share. I pray that I said something to bless you all this morning. I was encouraged. Um, so you have lots of scripture references to meditate on over the weekend. Um, and remember, uh, we are on day two of our 21 day, no complaining fast. And as we are heading into the weekend, I still will not complain. Um, and if you, if you fall, you know, get off track and you find yourself complaining, um, remember to just reset, you know, don't give up, um, just reset. Um, and we do that by first and foremost, repenting and automatically speaking five things that you that you are grateful for my shirt says grateful five things that you are grateful for and just move on and so remember we must stop confusing movement with progress this was such a good word today such a good word all right so y'all know what time it is all right you can share your takeaway um or it's your aha moment something that stood out to you or something that you will do differently because of what you heard and yes today we will be listening to the one-year bible again together um you all have been messaging me keisha i love listening to the one-year bible are we doing this every day i don't know <laughs> As the Lord says, listen to the one-year Bible together and waking early for his glory. We will do that. But I'm like, God, you know, I don't like starting something and not finishing it. But this is his broadcast, so we do what he says. So I pray that you all are able to stick around for 20 more minutes. Just go ahead and type in hashtag 20 minutes. And for those of you that may be new to the broadcast, many of us are reading, also listening to the one-year Bible um, this is our second year, but I have been doing this for many, many, many years. I think I started, I found the one-year Bible in 2007, y'all, 2007, 2007. Um, the publisher is Tyndale, and as long as you're following the Tyndale Bible reading um, schedule, you are on the same page that we are on. Um, so that's it. I didn't do any declarations for today, but that is okay. Y'all could go ahead and type declarations in the comments. I'm sorry, I completely forgot about the declarations today, but that is okay. All right, that's okay. Y'all forgive me, right? Y'all forgive me, right? Y'all forgive me. All right, so let me pull up the one-year Bible. You all continue to type in your takeaways, and if you have to leave, please do not forget to um, share your takeaway in the comments and let me pull up the one-year Bible on my iPad. And for those of you that want to know, it's not an app. It's audio.oneyearbibleonline.com. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> someone go ahead and um, type out a, a, a declaration for us for today. Or I decree and declare that I will trust in the Lord and allow him to order my steps. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Someone type that in the comments for me. I decree and declare I will trust in the Lord to order my steps. Hashtag waking early for his glory. All right to order my steps hashtag waking early for his glory all right so that's our declaration for today i decree and declare i will trust in the lord to order my steps hashtag waking early for his glory yes belinda number six was listen to the holy spirit um and the scripture reference was john 14 26 john 14 26 and number seven was rest in god's love proverbs 3 12 Rest in God's love, Proverbs 3.12. If you have not shared the broadcast yet, now is a fine time to share because we are going into listening to the word of God. 
All right, and so today is Friday, April 10th. I got ahead of myself. I was on April 12th. If you can hear this okay, type a number two in the comments, all right? Type a number April two if you 10th. can hear this okay. As we read scripture today from the Old Testament, we'll be looking in the final book of Deuteronomy okay. chapter 34 and proceed on into the book of Joshua. Now, when your time comes to die, the important thing is not the grandeur of your okay. funeral, but the greatness of your life. In fact, how you live now will, in fact, determine how you will die then. Moses lived in the heights, and he died in the heights. He often met God hey, on the mountain, Tyrese. saw his glory, and experienced his grace. So uh, keep your mind and heart in the heavenlies as you live on earth. Moses lived in God's will, and he died in God's will. So you never have to fear life or death yes if you're walking we just in obedience started, to the lord moses died the death of the righteous it says because he lived the life of the righteous and finally moses lived with a forward vision and he died with a forward vision as he viewed the promised land god let him see it wouldn't let him go in but he let him see it the nation so often wanted to uh, go back to egypt but he challenged them to go forward to the inheritance God prepared for them. It's good to plan your funeral, but it's also good to live your life day by day in such a way that you'll be missed when you're gone. And then as we uh, get into the book of Joshua, chapter 1 talks about God equipping us. Also uh, talks about God Someone encouraging us. The, um, Joshua was uh, the Bible not in an easy situation. Michelle he was not there in, in, the in an easy Someone situation at all. He was facing a difficult assignment, and he was replacing a great leader, Moses. Sure, he felt a little intimidated and uh, inadequate. But God had equipped him and prepared him for this very work. Just as God equips you and prepares you for the work he has for you. You see, Joshua had faithfully served with Moses mm -hmm. and was now qualified to lead. The task that you faithfully do today gets you ready for what God is preparing you for. Mm -hmm. And God will encourage you. See, the inheritance can be claimed only by the obedience of faith. But faith and obedience demand courage. God encouraged Joshua by giving his promise and the assurance of his presence and by reminding him that his success came from the word. God also encouraged Joshua to the people. Are you an encouragement to your leaders? Well, with that, let's begin uh, today's reading in the Old Testament. April 10th, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1, through Joshua chapter 2, verse 24. Then Moses went to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab, and climbed Pisgah Peak, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley with Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to Moses, this is the land I promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I told them I would give it to their descendants. I have now allowed you to see it, but you will not enter the land. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. He was buried in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab, but to this day no one knows the exact place. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyesight was clear, and he was as strong as ever. The people of Israel mourned 30 days for Moses on the plains of Moab until the customary period of mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. There has never been another prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The Lord sent Moses to perform all the miraculous signs and wonders 
in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh, all his servants, and the entire land. And it was through Moses that the Lord demonstrated his mighty power in terrifying acts in the sight of all Israel. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Now that my servant Moses is dead, you must lead my people across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Everywhere you go, you will be on land I have given you, from the Negev Desert in the south to the Lebanon Mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River on the east to the Mediterranean Sea on the west, and all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand their ground against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you will lead my people to possess all the land I swore to give their ancestors. Be strong and very courageous. Obey all the laws Moses gave you. Do not turn away from them, and you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of the law continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you may be sure to obey all that is written in it. Only then will you succeed. I command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua then commanded the leaders of Israel, Go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. In three days, you will cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you. Then Joshua called together the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. He told them, Remember what Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you? The Lord your God is giving you rest and has given you this land. Your wives, children, and cattle may remain here on the east side of the Jordan River, but your warriors, fully armed, must lead the other tribes across the Jordan to help them conquer their territory. Stay with them until the Lord gives rest to them as he has given rest to you, and until they too possess the land the Lord your God is giving them. Only then may you settle here on the east side of the Jordan River in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you. They answered Joshua, We will do whatever you command us, and we will go wherever you send us. We will obey you just as we obeyed Moses. And may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Anyone who rebels against your word and does not obey your every command will be put to death. So be strong and courageous. Then Joshua secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at Acacia. He instructed them, Spy out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. So the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night. But someone told the king of Jericho, Some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab, Bring out the men who have come into your house. They are spies sent her to discover the best way to attack us. Rahab, who had hidden the two men, replied, The men were here earlier, but I didn't know where they were from. They left the city at dusk as the city gates were about to close, and I don't know where they went. If you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them beneath piles of flax. So the king's men went looking for the spies along the road leading to the shallow crossing places of the Jordan River. And as soon as the king's men had left, the city gate was shut. Before the spies went to sleep that night, Rahab went up on the roof to talk with them. I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God 
of the heavens above and the earth below. Hmm. Now, swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee that when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all their families. We offer our own lives as a guarantee for your safety, the men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise when the Lord gives us the land. Then, since Rahab's house was built into the city wall, she let them down by a rope through the window. Escape to the hill country, she told them. Hide there for three days until the men who are searching for you have returned. Then go on your way. Before they left, the men told her, We can guarantee your safety only if you leave this scarlet rope hanging from the window. And all your family members, your father, mother, brothers, and all your relatives must be here inside the house. If they go out into the street, they will be killed. And we cannot be held to our oath. But we swear that no one inside this house will be killed. Not a hand will be laid on any of them. If you betray us, however, we are not bound by this oath in any way. I accept your terms, she replied. And she sent them on their way, leaving the scarlet rope hanging from the window. The spies went up into the hill country and stayed there for three days. The men who were chasing them had searched everywhere along the road, but they finally returned to the city without success. Then the two spies came down from the hill country, crossed the Jordan River, and reported to Joshua all that had happened to them. The Lord will certainly give us the whole land, they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us. April 10th, as we read in the New Testament today, we'll be narrating from the final part of Luke 13 going into chapter 14. It talks about opportunity. You know, God's kingdom is at work in this world, but many people fail to take advantage of their opportunities. You know, God feeds the birds of the air, but he doesn't pry open their beaks and stuff the food in. No, uh, there is opportunity there. Many people fail to take advantage. Instead of entering the kingdom, some people just spend their lives opinionating and asking a lot of questions about it, going nowhere, spinning, uh, spinning their wheels. You see, salvation is not a theory to discuss. It's a miracle to experience. I mean, no wonder Jesus wept when he saw the sinners uh, passing by all those opportunities to be saved. Don't wait for opportunities to come. They're already here. Luke uh, chapter 14 asks the question, do I exploit people? When we eat together, it should be a time of loving fellowship and joyful gratitude to God. But the Pharisees turned tables into traps and exploited people. They used a man with a uh, handicapping condition and trying to capture Jesus, trying to catch Jesus, trying to trick him. And they went to feasts only to receive honors. And they invited uh, to their feasts only people who would return the favor. Hospitality is ministry only if our motive is to help others and glorify God. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the New Testament. April 10th, Luke chapter 13, verse 22, through chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he went, always pressing on toward Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He replied, The door to heaven is narrow. Work hard to get in, because many will try to enter. But when the head of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. Then you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I do not know you. You will say, But we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you. Go away, all you who do evil. And there will be great weeping and gnashing of teeth. For you will see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets within the kingdom of God. But you will be thrown out. Then people will come from all over the world to take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this, 
Some who are despised now will be greatly honored then, and some who are greatly honored now will be despised then. A few minutes later, some Pharisees said to him, Get out of here if you want to live, because Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and doing miracles of healing today and tomorrow, and the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must proceed on my way. For it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. But you wouldn't let me. And now look, your house is left to you empty. And you will never see me again until you say, Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. One Sabbath day, Jesus was in the home of a leader of the Pharisees. The people were watching him closely, because there was a man there whose arms and legs were swollen. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in religious law, Well, is it permitted in the law to heal people on the Sabbath day or not? When they refused to answer, Jesus touched the sick man and healed him and sent him away. Then he turned to them and asked, Which of you doesn't work on the Sabbath? If your son or your cow falls into a pit, don't you proceed at once to get him out? Again, they had no answer. We're reading today in Psalm 79. Once again, Asaph is limiting the invasion of the enemy. He had several concerns. He was concerned for God's inheritance. The temple was defiled, the city destroyed, and the people slain. God permitted these things to happen to his inheritance, but God would rather destroy his inheritance than allow his people to sin and rebel. And Asaph was concerned about God's name. What will the heathen nations say about Israel and Israel's God? The corpses and ruins bore witness to something that the world needed to know. God is holy and does not tolerate disobedience. He has sworn to punish and judge all sin. Asaph confessed the sins of the nation and asked God to honor his name before the nations. Psalm 79, verses 1 through 13, a psalm of Asaph. O God, pagan nations have conquered your land, your special possession. They have defiled your holy temple and made Jerusalem a heap of ruins. They have left the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of heaven. The flesh of your godly ones has become food for the wild animals. Blood has flowed like water all around Jerusalem. No one is left to bury the dead. We are mocked by our neighbors an object of scorn and derision to those around us. O oh Lord, how long will you be angry with us? Forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that refuse to recognize you, on kingdoms that do not call upon your name. For they have devoured your people Israel, making the land a desolate wilderness. Oh, do not hold us guilty for our former sins. Let your tender-hearted mercies quickly meet our needs, for we are brought low to the dust. Help us, O God of our salvation. Help us for the honor of your name. O oh, save us and forgive our sins for the sake of your name. Why should pagan nations be allowed to scoff, asking, Where is their God? Show us your vengeance against the nations, for they have spilled the blood of your servants. Listen to the moaning of the prisoners. Demonstrate your great power by saving those condemned to die. O oh Lord, take sevenfold vengeance on our neighbors for the scorn they have hurled at you. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will thank you forever and ever, praising your greatness from generation to generation. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. The godly give good advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. All right. That 
is it. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word on today. We thank you for this word that leads us. Father, we thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, I love listening to the One Year Bible. I love listening to Tom Dooley. So for those of you that have been asking, it's audio dot, hold on, audio dot, one year Bible online.com. Let me make sure that's right. Audio dot it's audio dot one year Bible online.com. Audio dot one year Bible online.com. And it's really like on the internet. There's not an app for it. You just type in audio dot one year Bible online.com and that's where we listen. So yeah. This a uh, couple of things bless me. So what I do is I kind of highlight, underline, and then I go back and grab my journal and reread. Um, but I loved where where it said um, Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he went always pressing on towards Jerusalem. He was always pressing on, always pressing on. And so that really stood out to me. So I'm going to spend some time, um, spend some time there. All right. So, yeah, that's it. What time is it? It is 525, five minutes before Anthony wakes up at 530. So we have five minutes. Um, do you all want to share your takeaways? Remember, we're on day two of the no complaining fast, and that simply means we're not complaining. Um, we're on a 21 day no complaining fast. So um, that's it. I'll stay on and see if you all have any questions and read your takeaways. We have like four or five, four more minutes. And then Anthony's alarm is going to go off. So, all right. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Amen. Yes. Amen, Tanuke. Amen. All right. What you want to share your takeaways or what verse stood out to you? What verse stood out to you? I have a whole lot highlighted. But what verse stood out to you? Yes. Oh, all of Joshua. I think I have Joshua. Uh, Joshua 2, verses 6. All the way through verses 6 through 9 highlighted. Yes, keep pressing. That's right. He's such a great example. Such a great example. And that's all I can just picture. He just always just kept pressing, always kept marching forth, always moving forward. You know, and that just kind of reminds me that I need to do the same. You know, no matter what the enemy throws my way, I'm like, I'm going to keep pressing forward. I'm a finisher. I will not quit. Keep on moving forward for the Lord, right? <laughs> Yes, Sharonda, thank you. It's audio.oneyearbibleonline.com. All right, you all, I think I'm going to go ahead and go. Um, I will see you all at 1.30. Remember today, 1.30? No, 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 12.30. Somebody type in 12.30. 12.30, um, I'll be live for the next chapter in the book study um, on rejection by Joyce Meyer. We're in chapter three, and I did not go live to go walking yesterday, so I need to do that today but I don't know what time I don't know if I need to go live before 12 30 or after so y'all bear with me I just don't know what time um I'm gonna do that or should we walk tonight should we walk later on this evening together I need to do that today yeah I don't know what time I'll let you all know what time I'll post Mm -hmm. Keisha Smith says, I will trust God to order my steps. I will listen. That's good. I will consult my maker before making any major moves. Amen. Amen. I'm a finisher. I will not quit. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We don't quit. We're finishers. Yes, 1230 Eastern Standard Time. I'll be live. Um, and then maybe I'll come back live and walk after that. Fridays are crazy for me. Fridays are a busy day. Hmm. All right, looks like you all are done. It's 528, so got to go. I will see you all at um, 1230. All right, 1230. So bye. Love y'all. <laughs>